This story is going to sound crazy. Like, really crazy. Marriage rates have been declining since the 70s, and 2021 was the first year that more children were born out of wedlock than in it. For the first time ever since records began, 50.1% of women are childless by 30. The U.S. fertility rate has plummeted for the past 15 years. The people are choosing to get married later or live together beforehand or even um, not, not getting married at all. The nuclear family has almost been destroyed in the United States. You know, we, we, how, how many kids come from, you know, two-parent household with both parents that were their, bi their biological parent? 18%. People get married on average like 10 years later now than they did. It's destroying the country. If there is one thing that is apocalyptically different about our generation compared to every single other generation in history, it is the near total disintegration of the family unit, at the very least in the Western world. In 1960, 73% of children were living in a family with two married parents who were on their first marriage. By 1980, that had dropped to 61% of children, and today it is less than half. Almost 50% of all the marriages in the United States end in divorce, and researchers estimate that 41% of first marriages end in divorce. If we look at the up and coming generation, only half Half of today's teens will go on to get married at any point in their life, in spite of the fact that almost all of them aspire to marriage at some point in their lives. And families where the parents are unmarried do not fare as well. Cohabiting parents only make up 19% of all couples, but they make up 50% of family breakdown. And some people might respond, well that's people's choices, people's desires change over time, this is fine, it's not a problem. The issue is that it is a problem, we can clearly see that. The destruction of the Western family is leading to the destruction of the West as a whole. Fatherlessness and broken families lead to a vastly increased chance of going to prison, vastly higher rates of violent crime, increased mental health problems, increased government spending. Fatherlessness is the single largest driving factor behind poverty, vastly more so than race. Did you know that in America a white child from a mother-led household is three times more likely to end up in poverty than a black child from a two-parent household? And it is not just an American thing. The same pattern is repeated everywhere. In Canada, the UK, Australia, New Zealand, Scandinavia. The household is declining and where it declines, the society falls apart. You need to hear this. The destruction of the family is the destruction of the Western world. Bummer. Positive start, right? Bet you're glad you clicked on this video. But most of you know this, right? You might not know all the stats, but you're at least aware that broadly there are issues in the family and that that connects to a bunch of societal ills. But that's not the crazy story. It is a crazy story, I accept that, but it's one we know. The crazy story is in how this happened. The story of how this happened is so insane that if it was not historically documented, you would say that it is the craziest fiction. If you put it in a book, you would laugh and say, no one would ever act like that. That can't be true. And if there wasn't evidence to back it up, it would be a conspiracy theory of the highest order. So how did it happen? Let me tell you, it was intentional. We kind of assumed that this was basically accidental, that this was the forces of nature and society and history flowing together and we've got technological advancement and we've got capitalism and the industrial revolution and whatever has happened there and that this was kind of just a, an automatic response to changing times. We would think that there's no real cause behind it, no real reason for it. It is as incomprehensible and as hard to explain as the stars in the heavens or the words in Joe Biden's mouth. America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I was going to put him, uh, put, put, excuse me. Picture the scene. You're in the late 1960s. You've been invited to a meeting and you walk in. And at the start, the woman who's leading it stands up. But instead of saying something like, hello everyone, how are we doing? Let's get started. You know, something sane and human. I am human. Instead, she leads everyone in the following call and response chant. This is my woman costume, by the way. Why are we here today? To make revolution. Strong start, I like it. What kind of revolution? The cultural revolution. Cultural revolution. How do we make cultural revolution? By destroying the American family. Okay. How do we destroy the family? By destroying the American patriarch. Sorry, what? How do we destroy the American patriarch? By taking away his power. 
monogamy? How do we destroy his power? By destroying monogamy! How do we destroy monogamy? By promoting promiscuity, eroticism, prostitution and homosexuality. Now if I told you I went to a meeting like that, you would either not believe me or you would say what kind of crazy satanic pagan cult were you trying to join? But here's the thing, this wasn't that kind of group. In fact, this was the standard opening at the meetings of, and I kid you not, the National Organization for Women. Now the person leading these meetings was a woman called Kate Millett, and just in case the demonic chanting didn't give it away, she was not a very good person. And we have all of these issues that we could get into. One of her big passions in life was ensuring that children could sleep with adults and she felt that parents stopping their children from sleeping with grown-ups was an act of patriarchy. Which, you know, a flipping man to that. But all of that insanity didn't stop her from becoming a feminist icon and winning a whole bunch of awards. That's a strange choice, ladies, I'm gonna be honest with you. That's very odd. But what was she up to? What was she trying to achieve? She says it herself, it's right out there in the open. She was trying to achieve a revolution. Now her ideas were not entirely original. If you go back in history, she drew from Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels. And those guys recognised something which they were explicit about in the Communist Manifesto. Namely that in order for communism to succeed, the family needs to be abolished. To no more parents! If people are trying to raise kids, they're much less likely to let the government take all of their stuff. And so Millet is here and she is part of a group of people who in the 1960s recognised that economic Marxism was not likely to succeed. And so they took those ideas and they developed them further into what is known as cultural Marxism. And what's cultural Marxism? Let me explain. Imagine economic Marxism as like a single blade on a saw. I don't have a saw, I have a knife, okay? But imagine it's a saw. And you're attempting to chop down a tree with that saw, with this single blade. The problem is that every time the economy improves, that saw gets blunter. People who are well fed, who have cars and shelter and are not dying on the streets are much less likely to go for a bloody revolution. I rather not. And so what people do is they take this idea but they take it further and they say we don't just need one blade in order to splinter society and bring about the revolution, we need to have multiple. Imagine lots of saws. I couldn't afford a wood chipper, okay? I'm sorry, I don't have budget for that. This is a new channel, right? But imagine, you're trying to chop down a tree, you have one saw and then you've got a wood chipper, right? Or you've got one knife, bunch of knives, okay? And the advantage of that is that when one blade gets weaker, the others can kick in and bring about and keep driving that revolutionary force. But they run into the same opposition in this area of family. Marx and Engels believe that the nuclear family was a product of capitalism, and what we see in cultural Marxism is that the nuclear family is described as many things. It's considered to be a product of patriarchy, of privilege, of white supremacy, of homophobia. Incorrect. Now you would think that a bunch of people chanting about the destruction of the family and cultural revolution in a basement would go absolutely nowhere. Not gonna work. And of course, I'm not saying that the National Organization for Women was the sole driver of this. But what I am saying is this. There were multiple groups of people doing this kind of thing. There were multiple groups of people in different areas of society intentionally advancing the same agenda to destroy the family. The destruction of the family did not happen by accident. It has been driven by ideologues and activists across the Western world. And so a bunch of people chanting in a basement sounds insane. But when you get enough people and they buy in and they catch on to those ideas, these things can spread. It reminds me of my favourite episode of The Office, where Dwight Schrute unknowingly delivers a reworked Mussolini speech to a bunch of paper salesmen and they all join in. We must never cede control of the motherland, for it is... So though that might sound insane, though it might sound crazy, look around you. That revolution has happened. They've succeeded in doing this. <sighs> Goodness, this video is depressing, right? You guys only have to watch it. I have to put hours into like finding this stuff and recording it and researching it. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. By the way, if you would like to keep me depressed and you want me to keep making this kind of content, feel free to support me on Patreon. Keep me depressed. Or you can buy some stuff from wearecontramundum.com, which makes fantastic Christian merch. Finding this stuff, finding this stuff, researching. All of that goes towards supporting this channel. I would appreciate it. You guys, you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys. Let's keep going. 
Let me tell you why this won't succeed. For two reasons. One is this. This movement is going to slam into the brick wall of reality. There is such a thing as a natural family in the world. It takes precisely one man and one woman to make a child. That is a natural family. A child can only ever have two biological parents. He's not wrong. And I know we live in a fallen world and there are issues and there are challenges and there are times when this is not the case. But in the overwhelming majority of situations, a child will be better off with their two biological parents together in the home. And those parents will be attached to their children in a way that no amount of social engineering can possibly overturn. And the second reason is as follows. This world is ultimately created by and ruled by a father. God the Father made everything. God the Father is in charge of everything. Attempts to overthrow fathers and families are at their core a mark of rebellion against the Almighty Father. And the problem with doing that is, he will win. And so this movement cannot succeed in the long term and it will not succeed in the long term. The solution to a revolution is a reformation. It is a revival. It is an outpouring of the Spirit of God. And men and fathers seem to be the primary target of this. So I want to speak to the men. There is a movement that seeks to destroy your position and your place in society. But by the grace of God, you will not be destroyed. You're going to win. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to love God. We're going to love our wives. We're going to raise our kids. We're going to steer away from all of the vices that the enemy wants for us. We are going to reject pornography. We are going to reject promiscuity. We are going to reject all of these agendas. We're not going to be weak and emasculated. We're going to stand up and we're going to take our place. We're going to go to church. We're going to study God's word. We're going to pray. We're going to be filled with the spirit. We're going to build the kingdom. And I know this has been a bit of a downer of a video and it's been depressing making it, but can I say this? We're gonna do it with a smile on our faces to annoy all of the right people. A freaking man. I feel better. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like, subscribe, ring the bell, support on Patreon, go to We Are Contramundum, get something there. Also, if you want to understand the current state and the future of Christianity in the West, you need to check out this next video.